This is a great place. This is service number two of four today, and we're going to do an online service. We'll be service number five. And uh, we are so grateful to be believers in Christ, and we believe that God and Jesus and by the administration of the church is the hope of the world. We sang a song that said, the church, let the church live loud. Now, when he, when he said, let the church live loud, he didn't mean, or when we were singing, doesn't mean just to scream, ah! Although once in a while, scream's okay. It meant do something. And I believe that, that uh, I, I got a life to live, a, a lot of life to live still, and we need to do something. So let me tell you what we're doing here, so that many of you can get on board about what we're doing here. So, we had eight pieces of luggage up here, and we filled them up with goodies. And uh, a group of us from our church are going into Cuba on Wednesday, and we're going to take eight pieces of luggage with us. Each one weighs around 50 pounds. And first of all, let me just say about living loud. If you're under 40, you will not understand what I'm about to say, but the United States has been at war with Cuba for over 50 years. Not military war, because it would all be over within a second if it was a military war. But that island is controlled by the communists. And when John F. Kennedy was the president, the Soviet Union, which some of you think the Soviet what? You never even heard of a Soviet Union. The Soviet Union wanted to put nuclear warheads on Cuba 90 miles from our shore, and John F. Kennedy said, no, we're going to nuclear war. And we were this close to nuclear war that would have changed the face of this planet forever. And the Soviet Union backed down, but we have been on a financial war with these guys for 50 years because they're communists and socialists. This is not political. This is the truth. Any of you who think that communism or socialism is good, you need to get out of America. You need to go somewhere where you can know the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth sets you free. So I, 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 I like going to boldly go where no man has gone before. I like to get in there and get her done. So Fidel Castro and his brother Raul created this repressive government. They came in there and they stripped the people of everything they had, and the average person there gets $15 a month. And they live in shacks, and they, they banned the church. And they said, no more building of churches. But what most people don't know, because it's not publicized, that the major religion in Cuba is devil worship and the worship of our ancestors. And they have witches in these houses, and people will pay them money to talk to the dead to their dead ancestors. And so in order to control the people, the Soviet, uh, the, the communists uh, with the Soviet Union said, let's do this, let's, let's ban the church, but we, we can't ban the church totally. We gotta have house churches so that the witches and the devil worshipers can do their thing because you can't take religion from the people because then they have an uprising. And they said, okay, no churches, but you can have a house church thinking that it was gonna be devil worshipers, but they won't call them devil, wor devil worshipers. And what they did was they unleashed the power of God in that place because they said, okay, and people began to start church in their house, the church as we know it. And it has spread like wildfire. Not only that, but for this church, you need to know this, that the majority and the largest church in all of Cuba is the Assembly of God Church, and they speak in tongues in that place like you have never seen, and the Holy Spirit rolls in that joint. And so we started going over there, and uh, let me just give you a quick rundown. This piece of luggage, I, I took it home, and this is one I'm going to take with me. I'm going to, we're, we're, we're taking, all, all our group is taking luggage in with this, and, and this one is about 50 pounds. I did a, a synopsis of how much this cost, so some of you participated in this, and that was great. And each one of the, what we have in this luggage costs about $100 American, okay? $100 of American money is $1,850 in Cuba, okay? They make their own money up. It's called like Monopoly, 1850 So every, at the first of the month, every person in Cuba gets their allotted money. The average person, the average family gets $15. They go to a grocery store, which is called a commissary. It's only open three days in the month. They all go to the same stores controlled by the government. There they buy bags of rice and beans because all they're getting is $15 a month. Then they have to go and pay their rent. The government took every house. And then if you buy a house from them, you have to pay the government because there are no banks there. There is no credit. And so every house is either government-owned or is being bought by somebody who owes the government. 
And so by the time they pay their rent and their food, it leaves them $5 to live the rest of the month. And they live by scratching it out with plantains and, and so plantains, avocados, and uh, a couple other staples they have here, and dark meat chicken. You don't get white meat chicken. So every day, those of us who go, we will eat the same meal three times a day, day in and day out, day in and day out, and that's all they eat. We went out to a restaurant. I ordered a steak because the government controls all the meat, and the steak was really crummy, but guess what the side was? Beans, rice, plantains, cucumbers, and avocados, even at a restaurant. So if one of those people wanted to buy this, a family wanted to buy what we're bringing in, and they only had $5 a month to save, and they were able to save $5 a month, it would take them 30 years to save enough money to buy that right there. But because of you, we're living loud. And what we do is we go to these home churches way out in the wilderness, and we open up a piece of luggage, and we say, have your way, because the church is living loud. And then some of you have given money, and we go in, and like last... Last uh, the time I went, my wife and I went, they, we, um, we went to this place, and the guy had owned this piece of property, and he thought he would borrow money to build up his house church, and he ended up borrowing it from the government. And he sat there, and he just cried and bawled like a baby when we talked to him, and he said, I don't know what I was thinking. I wish I'd have never done it, and I'm so sorry. He didn't know, but we sat there. We prayed about it. We gave him and the money to go down right then, and we paid the government off. And now that house church is owned by the people, by real people, not the people, but real people. And we plan on doing it. And you guys have given us so much money, we've got to sneak it into the country. We're going to sneak it in. I got this report uh, two days ago. So we're going with uh, uh, NPLAD, Northern Latin American uh, District of the Assemblies of God, so we can have as equal amount of English speakers and, uh, um, you know, everybody needs an interpreter. Um, and And... Somebody from the NPLAD went to their bank and tried to withdraw a lot of money, and when they tried to withdraw the money, they, hey, and, and, and mama, uh, th there's a place right there where you could take your baby in and just love on him, and he can squeal, or her, she can squeal till she's blue in the face. So if you need to, let us know. We'll, pull it, we'll put you in there. That's a good spot. And um, so uh, she went down to her bank, local bank, and, 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 and remember, America's at war with Cuba. And they asked him, what do you want this money for? And they said, we're going to take it to Cuba. They froze their account. America froze their account immediately and wouldn't let them have the money. Well, it took them a couple days, and at the end of the story was they were able to get the money out. But that's how this thing is going. We're going to go in, and we're going we're gonna to light it up for Jesus Christ. We're, and, and our goal is to purchase minimum of two churches. So those of you who have given your money, we're going to sneak it in. You can sneak 4999 in without declaring it. And so we're going to separate it. We're going to put it in our shoes and our pants under our hat. We're going to swallow it and get it out later. You know, we're going to do some things, man. But we will get it there, and we will do. I'm so excited. Miracles are ha will happen there. My grandson's going. I'm praying that he gets filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and becomes, he gets called into the ministry. My son is going. I'm so grateful for it. And if you want to go next year, man, just get your money together and come with us. You're going to see things you won't see in America. That's the first thing. And you know what else we're going to do at 1 o'clock? we got an Hispanic service starting. We've been, on a, we've been on a soft opening for three weeks. This is our grand opening. We're believing for 400 people from our neighborhood coming into church. We're going to believe God. We're going to feed them. We're going to have bounce houses. We're going to get kids in here. And so I just want to say this really quick, that if you can come back at 1230, I'll meet you right at in the hall. We need some ushers, greeters, and some people to direct traffic. And we have some ladies that are going to help serve just so we can get them in here and, and just uh, we're going to put those with the, 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 the people that speak Spanish at these doors. We'll get the English people say, hola, 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 and then they'll be able to talk to you when they walk through the door. But that's our goal. And if, you've hel if you can help with that, show up. What else are you going to do? Watch football, sit around and rest, take a nap? Well, I'd like to do all those things. But just show up this week. We want to we live loud. Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish I could just turn back time? I screwed up so bad on something, I wish I could start all over again. Has anybody say yes? yes. We all wish that. And, 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 and if you're too young to wish that, you will one of these days. You, we think, man, if I could just turn time back. Because if you, maybe you've been raised in this town and, uh, and you've thought, you drive by and you think, man, I could have bought that house. Why didn't I buy that piece of property? It's now a freeway. I'd be rich now. You know, 
we, we think of things like that and or man I, if i'd only married that person or what was i thinking marrying that person why did i do that my mom told me don't do that and i did it anyway oh why didn't i listen we've all have those experiences maybe you're here and you were born and and, and and you're poor and you think man i was just born poor and i and everybody else got ahead but me and i just had a i just couldn't do anything i was so poor I, and or maybe you've thought man i'm i was born the wrong color I'm so grateful for the times we live in and if you look around you're gonna see uh, all the colors here and I may be lily white But I'm gonna tell you if you don't like colors if, if it bugs you that we're putting money in hispanic ministries You're in the wrong church and you're also in the wrong faith because when you get to heaven You're gonna see red and yellow black and white. They are precious in his sight. It's gonna be everywhere But maybe you were born 30 40 years ago when when it wasn't as free as it is now and, and you say, well, because of my color, I, I just couldn't get ahead. Let me tell you something. God is in the business of turning time back. I'm going to tell you one that this gets on my head all the time. I, I, I'm one of these people that will try anything. I mean, and, and I want you to always try something. I mean, if you're going to try something for God, what's the worst that can happen to you? You fail. And then you can just blame God. Well, you're, it's your problem, not mine. You messed up. I didn't. So some of you will remember because you've lived here a long time But where legends is where shields is That used to be four baseball softball fields and two hardball fields called Don Mello And then next to it where uh, On the other side of the shell station there was a big piece of property and there was a a, a shopping thing a, a, a discount shopping thing you know you it, 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 what, what do they call those things outlet mall it was an outlet thing that was going under anybody remember that and if you can't raise your hand you'll think what and it was at the edge of town almost and sparks didn't look like sparks and reno didn't look like reno well when we got here we went to the outlet mall and there were four stores open nothing was working for them it just and, and, I, and I just begin to think, and, and I'm telling you a true story, so don't think I'm doing some preaching about imagination here. It's not. I thought, you know, it would be cool if we bought that place and we turned it into a church mall because it's not doing any good anymore. So I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. One day I thought, I'm going to figure this out. So I got the guy who's owned it phone number. So I didn't have two cents to rub together. But I thought if I could get into a deal, I know I could get some money. So I called him and I said, here, what we'd like, we'd like to offer you a million and a half dollars and a $10 million donation certificate from our church that you could write off in your taxes. I said, well, you laugh. And he said, you know, I'd have to have at least two and a half million. And I thought, yeah, it's not worth two and a half million. Do you know how many times I've driven by legends and thought, if you could have just had a little more faith, you bonehead, we would have been owning that baby and it would be worth a hundred million today. You see what I, you, that actually, yeah, that actually happened. Two and a half million, we would have spit it two and a half million. I'd have called everybody I know in the whole world, I need two and a half million, we could have got it. But no, 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 that's not good enough. We've all done that. If I could just turn back time, we wouldn't be here. We'd be in the legends right now in the house, in the church mall. Anyway, that's another story. But you see, everybody has those experiences. Whether it's an emotional, physical, spirit, you, you just have those experiences. If you're watching by video, you have those experiences. You know what I'm telling you is true. There's a book in the Bible called Joel. J-O-E-L, Joel. Joel was a prophet. He's called a minor prophet. And what happened was, and there's nothing new under the sun, but 3,000 years ago, people acted just like we act today. They were rocking and rolling. They had lots of money and things were going good. And man, enterprise was going and people were building houses and business was happening. And boy, they were going great guns. And then they forgot about God. Quit going to church. Quit going to synagogue. Quit going to worship. And they did their own thing. And God doesn't, Put things upon us but he just removed his hands and he removed his hands from the people and well all of a sudden they had a recession in the bible recession is called drought and they had a drought and the drought lasted seven years and on the seventh year when they thought they could take no longer 
a locust swarm came through. And it's kind of like this picture. The locust picked everything out, and they were at the bottom of the barrel. And at the bottom of the barrel, they looked up, and they said, Oh, God, we're sorry. Ever been there? You know you have. So have I. Oh, God, sorry. And God sent the prophet Joel. And the prophet Joel didn't have to worry about prophesying bad things. He got to do the good job. He prophesied the good things. And so the Joel is a great soliloquy of the greatness of God. And let me just read you a few words here in Joel. It says, rend your heart and not your garments. And see, remember, they cried out to God. And God sent Joel and said, return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger and he's abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains. Why? Because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain, and the vats will overflow with new wine and new oil. And I will repay you for the years that the locusts have eaten. And then he begins to say something that, that and in, for a long time I was always kind of, what does he really mean, the young locust, the old locust, blah, blah, blah. But it's, I'll explain it to you in a minute. The great locust, and then the young locust, and the other locust, and the locust swarm. My great army I sent among you, and you will have plenty to eat until you are full. And you will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. And then we have one more scripture. It's in Exodus 26. In the beginning of the scripture, it says that the Lord brings the penalty for sin upon this generation to the third generation, but showing love in thousands of generations to a blessed generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You see... What I want to say is that there is no such thing as turning back time. We all know that. We all wish we could go back to the legend processes of our life. Everybody here has got a legend story. It just takes on a different face. But we all have the same story. Take your notes out and let's learn about how God wants to restore us even today. There's three things that I have learned. It is if you stay in faith, God will restore that which was lost. He will make up for the lost years of your life. Don't settle for less than God's best. The interesting thing is that many of us will have a legend story and then we'll do it again and again and again and again and again. And we don't learn anything. It's called insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, thinking that things are going to be different. Well, they're never different. I mean, some of you, I don't want to beat you up, but you've been married and divorced, married and divorced, married and divorced, married and divorced. Sooner or later, after the third time, it's got to be you and not them. Sorry, but it does. I mean, some of you have been in and out, out of debt, in and debt, out of debt, in and debt, out of debt, in and out, out of debt. Now you have your own in and out. Came from here. You don't sell hamburgers. You just get in and get out and get in and get out. How much longer are you going to get in and get out? Well, this time it'll be different. No, it won't. No, it won't. Why would we ever settle for less than God's best? That's the question. Why settle? Why settle for a half a drought? Why settle for only a couple of locusts? I don't know about you. I don't want any locust. And, 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 and when he said the young locust, the old locust, the medium locust, the little locust, the big locust, he's talking about every generation we have locusts. We all have locusts. It just takes on different form. Ours is bad health, good health, bad health, good health. That You know, it could be that. It could be come to church, don't come to church, get my heart right, go back, get my heart right, go back, cry out, oh God, come back to church, open the Bible, go away, go back, hear the word of God, then disobey the word of God. And we come back, back and forth, back and forth. I've met people, and maybe it's you. I don't know. You know, I don't pour out and point people. I don't write these for people, but I've met people. Maybe you're the one that have been to church so many times. And have dropped out so many times that I look and I think, when are you going to grow up? 
when you come to the house of God and God begins to bless you, why do you think it's you? May I say that one more time before we move on? When you come to the house or you read the word or you go into fellowship and God blesses you, why do they suddenly we think, well, look how good I am. <laughs> it's not you. It's him. Everybody say, it's not me. It's not you. No. And you heard me say this, and I'll say it again. I'll keep saying it till everybody here gets it. You're not that good, neither am I. Don't settle. Stay in faith. That's the first thing I've learned. Second of all, pray bold prayers. I'm asking you to give me back every opportunity that I've missed. I, I, this is a prayer. You pray to God. God, give me back the opportunities that I missed. My problem that I may have been my fault, I I may have blown it, but God, I know you are full of mercy. Pray the bold prayer. God, I want to do something. I, and, 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 and I telling you on the video that, you know, I don't watch the Star Trek things, but there's a thing in Star Trek. You've heard me say it before. I'll say it over and over that in my mind on it, it'll never get out to the day I die to boldly go where no other man or woman has gone before. Start praying those prayers. God, I want to be bold. You're not finished with me yet. I'm 64. I count the days down until I get Medicare, Medi-Cal, and Social Security. But I don't want to quit. I just want to suck the government till they got nothing left. Anyway, that's another story. Sorry. That's not political. It's just factual. No. Pray the bold prayer. Pray the bold prayer. God, God, I know there's something good for me to do. Let me see. And it's got to be different. It's got to be great. I got to rise on the wings. That's what I said. I'm not, it, you know, it's too late now. We're leaving on Wednesday with a bunch of us. But next time we offer one of these things, get bold. Quit going to In N Out. Quit going to McDonald's. Quit going to the movies. Just suck it up. Save a few bucks and go do something that will light your fire for the rest of your life. Change a nation. I got the report on Monday. And they won't say Cuba, but they said this island. That the Assembly of God churches in Cuba have reported 72,500 salvations last year in that island alone. Now, let me tell you something. The government has been trying to get that communist country, those communists out of there and the socialists out of there for 50 years. And it hasn't worked because they just dig their heels in and just suck the people dry. But I got news for you. If you get enough people saved in there and suddenly you get a, a leader saved and God can do what governments can't do. Can, can you, you, you get what I'm saying? God can do what military can't do. God can do what police can't do. God can do what socialism can't do. God can change a nation. So let's change a nation just in that one. But there's so many out there we can change. We can do things because God has blessed us. So pray big, bold prayers. The third thing is this I've learned. It's time for restoration. God can restore the lost years, the lost health, the lost peace, the lost family. God can restore it. Now, what night might not be today, but he can restore it. God's got a perfect plan. He can restore it and begin to believe. Hey, I don't have any peace. Man, where, where'd the peace go? God, I need peace. God can restore the peace. God can restore your children back to you. He can restore that thing that was lost. Anything that the locust might have eaten in your life is not gone forever. He, through the word of God 3,000 years ago, it was 2,600 years ago, 2,600 years ago, the, the same word then is the same word now. Do you know that the Lord says, I am the Lord your God and I change not? And I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I watch over my word to conform it, to perform it, to make sure that it works. If God's watching over your work, if God's watching over his word, you will work. You will have peace. You will be an overcomer. It'll be restored. You can never go back. You can't turn back time. And you thought, rats, I thought you were going to tell me how to do that. There is no such thing as turning back time. But nobody wants to turn back time because what you got in front of you is always better than what was behind. We just all of a sudden we look back and say, oh, I wish we had the good old days. You know the Ecclesiastes says, never say the good old, where, how the good old days were better than this. First of all, the good old days weren't better than they are today. 
The good old days weren't that good. You just forgot all the bad stuff. There was still sin in the good old days. There was still divorce in the good old days. There was still bankruptcy in the good old days. There was still sickness in the good old days. There were still people that you don't like in the good old days. The good old days were just like today. The only difference is today, you know, God will bring you forward, and today is the good day. Quit worrying about what happened in the past. Well, Pastor Pete, you don't know mine. Well, you don't know mine. I could be like a hundred millionaire right now. Get over it, Pete. Okay, moving on. Let's kind of wrap it up because there's something real important I want to tell you. Lost years will not defeat you. When you dig into God's favor and blessing, you have the promise of restoration. Some of us have lost, lot, have lost years. Some of you, listen, you were drug addicts or alcoholics. You've been, you, you, you were bound with addiction. And you lost those years. But God's word to you today is the addiction didn't steal the years from you. God will restore the years back better than ever before. Ever before. That's the word of God. We have the promise restoration and whatever locust you have is a dead locust the only reason it's still alive hold your gut put your seatbelt on and those of you watching on video the only reason it's still alive is because you keep feeding that locust locust can't live without being fed Whew, that'd preach but that's another week that's another time let's go to number two perhaps you're saying what's the use It'll never change. I've been believing for 5, 10, or 15 years. Stay the course. Keep believing. Stay the course. Keep believing. I want to talk to some of you parents, some of you family members here now. Stay, if you've got a child outside of God, stay the course. Keep believing. I have a sister that's so far out of God. She's so far away from God. She hates it. She is so bad. She does stuff I don't even say publicly. It's so bad. She puts it on her Facebook account, and I had to X her out and get her off my life because it just broke my heart every time she put something so stupid on her Facebook account. But you know what? Do not be weary in doing good, for in due season you're going to reap a harvest if you do not get up. Every day, promise you, this morning I did it, yesterday I did it, did it on Friday, did it on Thursday, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it the next day, I'll do it when I'm in Cuba, I'll do it wherever I'm at in this lane. I pray for, oh God, give it, save my sister Lori. Bring her to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Cause her to be so sick in the sin. Cause her to be sick of the people she's with. May those, those people that she's having emotional and, and, and physical relationships with that she's getting off the internet on street corners, make them so sick of her. Make them deny her. Make her crawl with the pigs, God, so that she looks up and says, they're in my father's house is better than this stuff here right now. And you, and, but if you don't watch yourself, you can get discouraged. Oh, I've been praying for three years. Keep praying. Keep praying. Do not be weary in doing good, for in due season you will reap a harvest, people on the internet. You will reap a harvest if you don't give up. One more. With Christ you in you, you can overcome every obstacle. You can break every addiction. You can live an abundant life. I want to close by saying this. Every day... I'm in the Word of God every day. And this isn't about me in the Word of God. I'm, I'm just giving you a truth. That God wants to bless you, but He wants to bless you for one reason and one reason only. And I've said it over and over, and I've said it over and over, and if you're listening on the video for the first time, God wants to bless you so you can be a blessing. Let me show you how your life is supposed to be. You're supposed to have a great life. You're supposed to have more than enough for yourself. And you're supposed to have more than enough so you can give to missions, so you can light the kingdom of heaven up, so you can be productive in the kingdom. That's what God wants for you. So you can, you can live loud. Live loud. Live loud. Remember I say it doesn't mean get loud. It means do something so great. That if God is not in it, it will fail. I have had a lot of failures, but I've never been sorry for them. Unless they were mine that I decided to do in my own dumb head. Because if God is for you, nada, 
nobody nil. Nothing can stand against you. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from the presence of God, even though it doesn't mean going to hell. It just means we lose that blessing. But restore unto us the joy of the salvation of the Lord, the peace that passes all understanding. Let us walk out of here excited for the things of God, moving in the blessings of God. Anoint us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. And while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, to let you know, that some of you in this building, if you die tonight, you don't know if you're going to go to heaven or hell. It doesn't matter if you live in Cuba. It doesn't matter if you live in the Russia. It doesn't matter if you live in China. It doesn't matter if you live in the States. Down in hell, there's going to be all a bunch of colors also. Red and yellow, black and white down there. But Jesus loved you so much that he called you into this church today. He called you to watch this video. And so I'm going to look at the left section, left center, video, right center, right I'm going to call it the section you're sitting in. If you want to give your heart to Christ, if you want to say, Pastor Pete, I feel the anointing of Jesus. I know that if I die tonight, I'm not ready. I want to be ready. So when I call out your section, look me right in the eye. I'll say thank you very much. Then you can put your head down. And after we look across this audience and people look up, I'm going to say a prayer. You and the church will repeat it after me, asking Jesus to come into your life. Left section, Pastor Pete, pray for me. I want to give my heart to Christ today. Don't look down as I see your face. Lots of folks in this section. Thank you so very much. Praise God. Left center, Pastor Pete, pray for me. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Right center, press, or no, on the video, I'm sorry. To skip you. Video people, if you're watching right now, you don't have to. You, you, you just repeat this prayer we're going to talk in about 60 seconds, and the Lord's going to come into your life. Now, right center, Pastor Pete, pray for me. I want to give my heart to Christ. Thank you so much for looking up. Right center, Pastor Pete, pray for me. I want to join those that looked up. Yes, sir. Going all the way down here. Thank you so much. Now, we're going to say a prayer. And those of you at home, say your prayer with us. And those that looked up, say the prayer from the honest heart. Church, here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my life and forgive me for my sin. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you looked up to accept Christ, congratulations. We're so glad you did. We're so glad you are here. If you're visiting with us, thank you for coming. Thank you for just coming to this place. I know the Lord has touched you. We have a young lady. Pastor Dave is on vacation. It's his uh, son's birthday, and he's going to college. And he plays football in college, so he was there yesterday for a game he was in. But his assistant, Kayla, is here. Kayla, would you please stand? Somewhere is Kayla. Kayla is outside already. I already, <laughs> she's so far onto it, she didn't have to stand. She's out there and she has a team ready. If you're visiting, go and see her. She wants to give you something from our church, wants to give you something in our coffee shop, wants to just let you know what a great place this is. She's got a whole team that will just uh, take you around. Also, if you gave your heart to Jesus, if you want a Bible, if you need to touch, we just go back and say, hey, I gave my heart to the Lord, and she'll give you a whole packet on how to get started in Christ. I'm so grateful for you guys. This has been such a great day, and you have no idea what's going to happen with the finances that you gave to us. <laughs> We're going to turn these people on for the glory of God. And, and buy churches. I'm hoping that we buy two more while we're there. We already own one over there. We own three more. And, and just keep, the, keep being bold and keep being loud. Thank you for your tithing. And all your giving is always above tithe. Tithe is number one. Always number one. Because that's where your insurance goes in your house. And God says, I'll rebuke the devourer. Won't come in and steal all your stuff and everything else. And then the offerings brings multiple blessings. Lord, thank you for great givers. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you as you give. Let's watch the connection. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Crosswinds.